Hey, how is everyone doing? Um, I'm still in Shanghai, which is amazing. Uh, I'm setting records for being in Shanghai. Um, obviously, the family is very happy. Uh, I'm happy too, to be honest. It's uh, great to be home. I can go to the gym. I can plan my day. Uh, it's wonderful. But um, today, I want to talk about you know someone I look up to and something he said recently that kind of caught my attention. So. Back in one of uh, Bourdain's, Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown, Unknown Seasons, uh, he filmed in Shanghai. I want to say like season six, but it might have been season five. And Anthony Bourdain's a big hero of mine. I totally look up to him as a television uh, personality. Uh, obviously, um, you know, he's very popular. Uh, lots of people watch his show. Uh, he's very good at making his shows. Uh, fantastic on-screen personality. He's a great chef, great writer, great everything. So he's done very well and he's, I always watch his show, Parts Unknown is one of my favorite shows on CNN uh, along with Inside Man and um, so those are kind of who I look up to, you know, Anthony Bourdain, Morgan Spurlock, these kinds of people. And, and when I was coming back to Shanghai uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, I was filming in Canada, then I was in Boston, I was in New York and then I came back here home. Um, you know, that drive in from the airport was really powerful because I love living in Shanghai and I'm, you know, I've been living here for 16 years. So if I didn't like it, I would have left by now. And, um, and I love how modern the city is. I love how much it's changed. You know, when I first got off the train in Shanghai 16 years ago, uh, with all of my worldly possessions, you know, in my back, on my back, in my backpack. Uh, the city was very different. You know, it wasn't quite as sophisticated. It wasn't the economic powerhouse. There wasn't the kind of wealth uh, that you see on the streets like you do these days. And I still like those days. And I reminisce about them with a, a few close friends of mine who were there with me and who are still in Shanghai. And we're a very small group. You know, the people who have been here 16 years or more than 15 years. Um, but we still get together and reminisce about the good old days. But beyond the good old days, you know, Shanghai now is an incredibly comfortable city to live in. You know, we have Europeans and Americans and South Americans and Africans coming from all over the world, bringing their culture, bringing their cuisine, bringing, um, you know, in some ways their way of life to this city. And, um, and I wouldn't say it's like a multicultural city, like Shanghai is not a multicultural city because there's like 30 million Chinese people and maybe like a couple hundred thousand non-Chinese people, you know, foreigners. Um, so it's not multicultural, but my little world that I've somehow created for myself in China is pretty multicultural. Like there's an Italian restaurant I go to nearby and it's owned by an Italian guy. Um, there's a Spanish restaurant I like to go to and it's owned by a Spanish guy. Um, the Japanese restaurant I go to is owned by a Japanese guy. So, you know, um, the world that I exist in is quite multicultural and I get to meet people from all around the world. But when you look at Shanghai as a whole, it's not very multicultural. And someone pointed that out to me during one of my talks a couple months ago, maybe last year. It's like, how can you say Shanghai is multicultural when, you know, the foreign population, the non-Chinese population is like 2% or something like that. And I was like, yeah, fair enough. But anyways, if you were looking for it, Shanghai has a lot of great restaurants, a lot of great nightlife, um, and a lot of people from other parts of the world coming here doing really interesting and unique things, both in the culinary fields, but also in media and television and, and what have you. So I like Shanghai. It's modern, it's exciting, it's fun. And then I was reading an article um, as I was coming back to Shanghai a couple weeks ago, and it was um, from Anthony Bourdain. And in one of his episodes, he actually says that Shanghai makes New York look third world. And, um, and yeah, um, well, you know, that's kind of true in a lot of ways. Um, I don't know if you've seen Pudong, that's the new area uh, east of the Huangpu River. And uh, we have three buildings there. One is 88 floors, one is 101 floors, one is 150 floors. And that whole skyline um, is really remarkable. So, you know, uh, Bourdain talks about just the skyline, the, the, um, the wealth that's being generated, the show of wealth that you see on the streets uh, of Shanghai as well, and just how much it's changed over the years. And, and I always like 
watching, uh, you know, someone who has had a lot of experience traveling the world, like Anthony Bourdain, come to my city, uh, where I live. It's not my city, but it's my home, um, and kind of riff on his experiences here. And uh, and that episode, you know, was really good, good because uh, I like also seeing people like Shanghai, and um, and Bourdain's traveled a lot, and for him to have kind of a positive impression of the city. Uh, it's good. It makes me feel like I made a good decision 16 years ago. You know, I like living in Shanghai. Um, people make nice television shows about Shanghai. And when I think back, you know, about how much Shanghai's changed over the last 16 years, I also have to think about how much I've changed in the last 16 years. And when I first came to Shanghai, I was unemployed. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, I didn't really have anything going on. And, uh, and then I got to work for the New York Times for like seven, eight, nine years. I don't know how many years it was. I don't know when I officially stopped working for them, but I started working for them, I think, in 2003, maybe. Anyways, um, and uh, yeah, so I loved working for the New York Times. And the New York Times gave me such a unique vantage point to how not only Shanghai, but how China in general was changing and how fast it was changing and all and the pace of change and just the excitement and the, and the, the inequality in the change and the inequality in the development and all these kinds of things were themes um, that I had the chance to work on with incredible journalists like Howard French uh, and David Barbosa uh, for the New York Times. Those were the two guys that I had the chance to work with um, the most uh, during my tenure, uh, you know, with them. And, you know, I always like to say that um, my working with Howard French basically gave me a free education, a free journalism uh, MA. And now actually Howard uh, teaches uh, uh, journalism at Columbia. And you know, I got to sit next to him for eight years, uh, five years, when six years when he covered China. And, um, and I just got like a PhD in how to be a, you know, a journalist and how to be a journalist with integrity. And, and, uh, and we had so much fun uh, traveling around. And, and it was, and again, it was a great way for me to understand how countries like China can change overnight. And that's something that, um, that I've really enjoyed watching and that I've even tried to capture in some of my own photography uh, and some of my own television shows. So uh, it was great to see that Bourdain's a fan of Shanghai. It was great to see that he thinks that uh, China's changing and the city at least is changing in a pretty positive way. There's still lots of problems in Shanghai. We have a pollution problem, uh, there's inequality, um, the social safety net is, you know, n not great, for example, um, but it's developing and, and, uh, and it's not a finished product and, and uh, you know, you hope that uh, every day the city and, and, you know, the government here will get better and I can say in the last 16 years they've done a really good job of just improving things and it's not at a western level. You know, the social safety net's not as good as Canada. Um, but, you know, one could say that their embracing of capitalism is probably even better um, than anything you could find in the United States. So uh, that's one thing that they have going for them. The just ruthless capitalism that can be found in Shanghai is pretty awe-inspiring. So yeah, so Bourdain actually did say that, and I'm just going to show you this little clip that was on CNN, and I hope I don't violate any uh, infringement by showing this, and if I do, I'll probably just have to take it down, and then this is the part of the video that'll just go black. But this is Anthony Bourdain saying, um, Shanghai makes New York look third world. Check it out. You grew up in New York, or Los Angeles, or Chicago, and you think that where you live is the center of the world, or the most modern, or the wealthiest? or the most sophisticated, Shanghai is going to be a real rude slap in the face. Every time I go to China, it changed from before. There's been this huge move from sort of an agrarian, farming, manufacturing economy, rural economy, to, you know, a new middle class enjoying new freedoms to travel internally and to spend money. And it is a money mad, materialistic, uh, luxury crazed, food crazed culture. And levels of luxury and, and technological s sophistication that 
makes me, a New Yorker, feel like I live in a third world country at times. China is, is a country that's changing you know, faster than any country in, in history. It's got a skyline that they, they frankly wouldn't allow us in New York because we're too provincial. It is the most ferociously capitalistic go-go economy anywhere. And to what extent the past will, will be able to enjoy that, I don't know. You can still find the good old stuff though. And I did. Um, so yes, so I like living in Shanghai. I still live in Shanghai. It's funny that I do most of my work outside of China now, but I still choose to live in Shanghai just because I like the city so much. I don't know if I could handle living in New York or LA. Those would probably be the other two options. Um, maybe my career would probably be better if I lived in New York and LA because I'd have like more friends in the industry and I'd be able to like network with more people and all that kind of stuff. But I kind of like being away from that because I kind of get to do what I want. Um, people still fund me uh, for my ideas and, uh, and I'm not kind of in that bubble. Like I'm living out in the real world. I'm living in Shanghai, China, you know, the, the frontier, the edge of what the future is going to be. So, uh, so from Shanghai, I say to all of you, uh, have a great day and, uh, and I'll be sure to be in touch. Cheers.